In today's video, we are going to look at a game played between uh, Magnus Carlsen and Ding Leren. Ding Leren played the Ninja Indian defense, the missed variation. I am going to uh, play it from the black side to let you people understand that how to play Ninja Indian defense like Ding Leren he played. This was a very hard for draw by both of the GMs. It was played in 2019 uh, rapid match. The time control was 25 minutes 10 seconds. Let's start with the game. Magnus Carlsen opted for d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, and bishop b4. And this is the start of the Nimzo pitch variation. Nimzo Indian variation. Here, there are white goes for different plays like. Queen to c2, queen d3, or bishop to d2. But here Magnus Carlsen opted for the move a3. And black usually takes this knight over here on c3. Just to create these double pawns of the white. And uh, black is going to hit this pawn over on c4 while developing his uh, pawn to b6 and bishop to uh, a6 then knight to c6 and a5 this is the way he is going to hit this pawn on c4 after that b6 going with the plan f3 was played and uh, it is uh, there are different move orders which you can go for here also e3 is also being tried bishop g5 has been also tried but magnus carlson went for f3 he want to can take full control of the center the idea behind playing this f3 move is bishop a6 was the standard move but uh, this knight f6 also play e4 and bishop a6 hitting this pawn on c4 and in the game uh, black is actually offended by these continuous threats of black on the c4 pawn Bishop g5 was played, h6, hitting the bishop over here, and white has the idea which is uh, that he is going to play the move e5 and pin this knight over here. So immediately hitting this bishop on g5. Bishop h4, knight a5. If white plays e5 over here, then black is going to play the move g5, hitting his bishop which happened in the game also. There is another continuation over here and that is queen to a4. After that queen c8 and knight h3 and queen b7. This might be also with the continuation but in the game e5 was played and g5 you are hitting my knight over here i'm going to hit your bishop over here on h4 bishop to f2 and knight h5 c5 immediately hitting this pawn chain and giving away uh, the right to castle. Delay and go for bishop into f1, king into f1, and d6 was played by Delay. Okay, which pawn you are going to take? Immediately hitting in the center. E into d6 was played, c into d6 was played, 
and h4 now it is the time to open this king side as black is not going to castle as white is not going to castle here g into h4 was played which was actually a uh, mistake i would say a blunder instead of it was better to play the move king e7 and after that queen c2 now knight c uh, sorry uh, knight f4 f4 uh, f and after that g3 again knight h5 the point was playing the knight f4 was to provoke playing the move g3 this might also be the sequence of the game another continuation was also that after king e7 and after queen c2 d uh, sorry d into c5 was another try also after that knight e2 and queen d5 this was the better continuation was black uh, but here Ding Lenin made the uh, mistake and that was g into h4 after rook into h4 knight f6 c4 was played and this was the mistake for magnus and it was better to go for instead of here queen e2 hitting this pawn twice and bringing this queen to f4 this was better so we we'll go back to our game where c4 was played after that d into c5 and d into c5 instead of playing the move d into c5 it was better to play the move knight e5 developing this knight over here and this knight was doing nothing over here after that knight d7 and knight c3 queen e7 and knight b3 now you may say that developing this knight over here maneuvering it to c3 and to b4 was better instead of uh, taking this pawn on c5 so b into c5 queen into queen rook into g1 and knight d7 c into b6 was played a into b6 now white has two pawn islands three pawn islands and black has four sorry black has three and white has also three pawn islands whereas white has majority over here on king side sorry queen side and uh, black has majority over in the center and king side the knight may be coming over here the bishop may take it after pawn takes this would be a fast pawn this knight is not doing anything this is a liability for black and this knight is a liability for white this is the assessment of the position knight e2 was played in the game controlling these scares bringing the knight to c3 and then to b4 r to e5 rook c8 was played hitting this pawn on c4 knight c3 was played bringing the knight over here on b uh, b5 or bringing the knight to e4 here rook into c4 was played immediately it was better to take this pawn with knight as this knight was doing nothing over here on a5 so bringing this knight uh, to the center towards the center and to, towards activeness after that knight b5 and knight d e5 
this was the best continuation but in the game rook into c4 was played after that knight e4 centralizing this knight and controlling these squares in the black strategy f6 and d6 rook c7 was played over here knight d6 check king f8 it was better to go for king e7 here after that bishop g3 was going to be played and then e5 So after king f8, bishop g3 was played and e5 now. Now it was time to play the move bishop e1. But here uh, white played the move, uh, Magnus Carlsen played the move knight f5. But it was better to go for bishop to e1, hitting this knight over here on a5. And after h5, then knight b5 was better. We continue with our game where bishop, uh, where knight f5 was played in the game, f6 was played, strengthening this uh, pawn on e5. Bishop e1 now, and knight b7. Rook g4 was played and rook h7 was played as this rook was coming to g7 <laughs> rook a4 was played bringing the rook from here a5 to give the check and control this last rank to control the eighth rank here knight bc5 was played, instead of it, it was better to play the move h5 over here. The idea behind h5 is that after rook e7, pinning this knight over here to this rook on c7, then knight dc5. And bishop b4, then king a, e8. Now these two rooks are connected and this rook is basically uh, doing nothing over here of fight. So after knight bc5, rook a8 check, king f7, bishop b4, pinning the knight over here. Now see in this sequence of moves, these rooks are not connected. h5 rook d8 king e6 hitting this knight over here on f4 knight d6 rook c6 protecting this pawn and this knight was going to come to b4 b5 sorry knight c8 king f5 Rook e8, and from here, neither black nor white made any type of blunders. The game went smooth, not even a single inaccuracy from here. They played this end game brilliantly from here. I would just explain the ideas behind the moves. King g6 bringing the uh, king to the safe square king g1 bringing the king over here from here to attack this pawn on h5 king f1 rook d8 hitting this knight over here king g6 again king h2 the same idea which i discussed Rook g7 asking uh, uh, why that I am going to let you play this idea by bringing the rook then when the king will be moved or king will be moved over here on whether h6 and f5 then it will be a check to the king on 
g3 rook e8 king h7 taking the king away from the threats of these two white uh, pieces knight d6 rook g8 rook e7 check rook g7 rook e8 again rook g8 as both of these players don't have proper moves rook e7 check rook g7 and rook e8 and this was the draw as both of them did not have any type of moves over her left and this was a very hard hard for draw and the way these both grandmasters played the end game was marvelous although there was a slight mistakes from both sides in the game so i hope you enjoyed my video kindly subscribe hit the bell icon button and like it thank you thank you very much